This is Pre-Calc 11, Chapter 4.1. We're going to learn properties of quadratic functions. We need to know the definition of standard form. And this is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And when we're looking for zeros of a function, we want to find ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. So let's look at these two graphs. First of all, let's look at the zeros. So we have two zeros there, and we have two zeros here. And why are they called zeros? Well, that's when the function intersects with y equals zero. y equals zero is the x-axis. Let's look at some other features. This point is called the vertex. And this vertex happens to be at 1.5 and 1. This vertex is at 1.1 and negative 1.5. Okay, what else do we have? We have a maximum value here. And that equals 1. Here we have a minimum value. We also have an axis of symmetry. And we always write x equals 1.5 for this axis of symmetry. So here we have axis of symmetry. And we write x equals, and this is 1.1. Notice that the axis of symmetry has the same x coordinate as the vertex. And notice that the maximum value has the same y value as the vertex. Here we have the minimum value that has the same value as the y coordinate of the vertex. And the other feature that we have that you're familiar with, this is concave down. And this is concave up. So, quadratic functions must have these properties. It must have either a minimum or a maximum value. Next year, you'll learn about global and local minimum and maximum values. And just so that you know, these are global max and global min. So, they also have an axis of symmetry. And it must be in the form of an equation, so x equals x equals. It must have a vertex. So here's our vertex. Here's our other vertex. It must have a y-intercept. Because the domain is all real values, it must have a y-intercept. And the y-intercept is here and here. We don't know what the value is. It's just there. And the domain is all reals. Now, quadratic functions may have the following properties. It might have no zeros, or one zero, or two zeros. And as I've already mentioned, notice the relationship between the vertex and the axis of symmetry, and the minimum and maximum value. The zeros are the x-intercepts. Okay. Zeros are the x-intercepts. Another thing to note is that the axis of symmetry can be calculated from the average of the x-intercepts if they exist. So if we take this, add it to this, divide it by 2, we get the axis of symmetry. Take this, add it to this, divide it by 2, we get the axis of symmetry.
So adding and dividing by 2 is a way of averaging. And if we have concave up, concave up, the range is y is greater than or equal to the minimum value. y is greater than or equal to the minimum value. If we have concave down, concave down, the range is y is less than or equal to the maximum value. You will need to be able to identify a basic parabola. So, here are some points labeled. And from here to here, from 0 to 1, we're increasing by 1. From 1 to 2, we are increasing by 3. And from 2 to 3, we're increasing by 5. Okay, so we're increasing by odd numbers. Every time we move one to the right, we increase by odd numbers. And it's symmetrical, so the same thing happens on the left. So that's for a basic parabola where a is equal to 1. Now, if we have y is equal to ax squared, then we just multiply the odd number by a. So, for instance, we have y is equal to 1 half x squared. From here to here, we have 1 half. From here to here, we have 3 over 2. From here to here, we have 5 over 2. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2. Here we have 1, 1, 2, 3 over 2. And we also have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7 over 2. So we have odd numbers all multiplied by a half. So this is a parabola. Here's another example problem. Find the vertex, axis of symmetry, intercepts, range, and min-max of y is equal to negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 6. So, one thing about this form, the first thing that you can pick off is the y-intercept. It's simply the constant term. Here, we have the vertex. And it is a point. Please don't list just an x value or just a y value. It is a point. And on a calculator, we can enter this function, negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 6. We'll use a default window, negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10. And we graph this. And we can calculate the vertex. This is concave down, so we're calculating a maximum. So we press enter for the left bound. We go to the right of the maximum, press enter, and enter. And we get 0.75 and 7.125. These values here. Okay, so we can already say what our max value is. Okay, when you're saying max value, it's just one number. It's not a coordinate. You just say the max value. And the range, y is less than or equal to 7 and 1 eighth. And from here, we also have our axis of symmetry.
and that's x equals 3 quarters. 0.75 is 3 quarters. Next thing we need to do is find our x-intercepts. So on our calculator, we'll go second calc, and we're looking for a zero. We need to be to the left of the zero and to the right of the zero. And just hit enter for the guess, and we get this value. And that equals negative 1.137. And we'll find the other intercept. 2 for 0. And we need to be on the other side of the hill. So now we're on the left of this 0. And we need on the right of this 0. And here's our second x-intercept. Okay, and if you have a Casio, let's see how that works. And our equation is negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 6. And we're going to change the window here, negative 10, 10, negative 10, and 10. And draw. Now, solving on the Casio is much easier. We just press F2 for max, and there's our solution, 0.75 and 7.125. Next, we want to find our intercepts. These are called roots on the Casio. Our first one is negative 1.137. And to find the other one, we just press right. And we have 2.637. Next, we want to identify if these are parabolas. So we need to do the difference. So the difference from here to here is 1. The difference from here to here is 1. We're assuming that this is the vertex. The distance from here to here is 1, the distance from here to here is 2, and 2. So this is not going up by odd numbers using a constant multiplier. So this is not a parabola. Let's look at this one. The lowest point is here. So going from here to here is 2. Going from here to here is 6. Going from here to here is 10. So this is simply 2 times 5. This is 2 times 3. And this is 2 times 1. So we are going up by odd numbers with a constant multiplier. So yes, uh, parabola. Okay, last example, find the vertex, axis of symmetry, x-intercepts, range, min, max of this function. This time I'm just going to use the Casio. You can follow along on the TI. So 2x squared plus x plus 4. Okay, I'm going to find the minimum point, F3. So here's our minimum point. Vertex. Negative 0.25, or negative 1 quarter. And we have 3 and 7 eighths. So, Again, we can figure out the range. It's concave up, so y is greater than or equal to 3 and 7 eighths. Our axis of symmetry. We have x equals negative 1 quarter. 
So we found the vertex axis of symmetry. We've done the range, max minimum value equals three and seven eighths. And last thing we need is the intercepts. Well, it doesn't cross the x-axis, so there is no, there are no intercepts. But let's try solving for it anyways. So we're going to look for a root, and it says none found. So if you get this error message, it just means that there are no x-intercepts. And we have another intercept. We have the y-intercept. And we have no x-intercepts. Okay, even if there's none, you have to explicitly say that there are none. And that completes this lesson.